feeling lost and alone, looking for validation from your partner only to find the feeling of rejection and continued frustration, you're together yet so far apart. Now your frustration has turned into disdain and resentment. Your insecurities have begun to affect every aspect of your life. Ironically, you have now become the cold and detached one, shielding yourself from the uncertainties of your relationships. Dr. April Brown has created Bringing Intimacy Back, a series of discussions that are designed to help you reclaim what you have lost along the way. Dr. April will help you rediscover and reconnect to the intimate relationship your heart so desires. Go to www.bringingintimacyback.com today and let the healing begin. Welcome to the Bringing Intimacy Back show, where intimacy is real. On this show, we aim to help you increase the intimate connection with your significant other, children, family, friends, business networks, community, and your power power. We give you the secret power to intimacy. Well, welcome guests, and welcome all listeners who are listening to the show today. I know that we're in times of um, uncertainty right now because many of us are stuck at home, maybe with the kids, stuck at home through the stay at home order, working, and things are just not what we're used to. And so um, on the show today, we are talking with an expert who helps couples because many of us, of course, are in relationships that helps couples move past some of the struggles they have in their relationship. And today I'm so blessed to have um, John Whiteman here. He's what I call a miracle man in couples counseling. Hello, John. How are you doing? Okay. How are you, April? I'm doing good. Yes. Yes. Well, let I me feel tell pressure. You. Yes. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about John and why we call him the Miracle Man. John is an experienced marriage and relationship counselor, and he's the owner of a counseling practice called Life Bridge Coaching in Maryland. He has a history of working with couples who are struggling with connection, with infidelity, conflict. Not only does John have a successful business, but he has a very, very inspiring story because he is a person who is resilient. And that's kind of something that um, many of us are looking for, many of us need to have during this time of difficulty. John has been waiting for a liver transplant for 13 years. 13 years he waited. He endured seven surgeries, two strokes, and two seizures. John overcame all of these obstacles. So all these health things that are going on, going on with the doctor and all that and the health and not feeling well while building his practice. John became the first person in Kaiser permanent history to be removed from the transplant wake list. His story is truly a miracle. Welcome, John. Thanks, April. Thank you so much. That's, uh, when I hear it, it's hard to believe that was me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so. yes. Yeah, so John, just to get to know you a little bit, how did you even um, start in this um, journey of coaching and counseling? Okay, well, um, I would say as a kid, uh, my mom was my hero and she was a therapist. Okay. Um, and I remember sitting on her couch one day and she said, John, you have a gift, you see people. And I went into the field, which is, uh, they're no longer in existence, a long-term psych hospital. And I work with a name I'm sure you know very well, um, Dr. James Masterson. And yes. I worked with him closely because I was one of his son's friends growing up. So I kind of had the inside track. And um, one thing I've learned through my practice, um, and this is not in any data or research about connection, is everyone has a story, everyone has a dream. And if you mess with either one of them, you end up talking to you or I. Okay. <laughs> it's pretty simple. So um, I was married before um, for 14 years and um, it didn't work. I, I wasn't authentic. Um, I, were you doing counseling at the same time? 
Is that what no, you I actually, I were, I started in the field. Um, and then, you know, one day we decided to have kids and it was in order to do that, I had to give up on my dream. Okay. So moved to Maryland, uh, left the field, always stayed involved some way. Um, and I, um, I, I learned about that I just couldn't be myself. Um, right. And so, you know, as divorce happened, um, I, my mom also had a battle with cancer. Uh, she died and a very close friend of mine got killed in a car crash. Wow, and a lot of dramatic stuff happened to you. Yeah, it wasn't a good yes. year. <laughs> so um, I went on a road where I ate too much, slept too much, and drank too much. Um, and I, I lost everything. I, uh, I faced eviction 38 months in a row. Wow. Um, so one day, uh, it took me about 45 minutes to walk to my car. And, um, I realized there was something wrong. And I went to the hospital and expected to get a pill and walk out and be on my way. And after four and how hours. Old time? I'm sorry? How old were you at that time? I was, um, I would say I was about uh wow um 45 somewhere around, yeah i'd say about 45 44 or something and uh my father was a physician and he was the first physical i had was in the emergency room he uh used to tell me he treated me with skillful neglect um <laughs> so uh i i expected to get a pill and um go on my way and they sat me down they said you're in complete liver failure you keep doing what you're doing and you'll be dead in two months mm. so i said okay and i stopped and i stopped immediately uh it took me six months to say the word cirrhosis to myself out loud right and as I walked out of the hospital, because cirrhosis is typically seen as a death sentence, I see it as a life sentence. Mm. Um, it's not many people can say cirrhosis is one of the best things that ever happened to me, but it, it is. Um, and I walked out and I said, well, what do I do now? And I decided if I could be half as strong as my mom, I'd be okay. And that was the road that made me feel like I can do this. So through the surgeries, 4,000 pounds of fluid drain from my body and everything I went through, um, I always thought just be half as strong as your mom, just be half as strong. And as I started to get my life together, I met Sherry and Sherry is amazing. Mm -hmm. And we used to talk about, you know, I worked in this field and I loved it. And it was my dream. And she, uh, you know, said, well, go back, go to training, do, you know, do something about it. And um, I said, okay. And I found the Gottman Institute in Seattle, okay. completed their trainings. And, um, and then it was, it was really, it was really tough, April, because I'd gone through the training, coaching, certification. And I couldn't afford an office. Mm. And Sherry, I was expressing frustration. And I was like, I, I can't believe I did all this and I, I can't afford to do this. And she said, well, use my house, use my living room. And I'm like, are you serious? She mm -hmm. said, yeah. I was like, you're gonna let strangers into your house? <laughs> and you know, then couples in turmoil, she said, yeah. And I said, why would you do that? And she said, because it's your dream and I want you to have your dream. Wow. So now eight, nine years later, um, I am uh, on this app called Thumbtack uh, okay. and recognized as the best in the country. You know, okay. This. Um, so I, 
I typically don't follow the 50 minute mile. Mm -hmm. This is their life. Okay. Yeah. So you've faced so much um, adversities. Mm -hmm. and, you know, right now, um, a lot of us are experiencing that adversary through COVID-19 and a variety of other things that are happening with people with the loss of jobs and income and, and health and um, hopefully not family members. Um, so what, because you said here, you took that death sentence and you made it into life sentence. Yeah, what, yeah. what motivates you? Um, to live? Uh, I, uh, I live the way. Yeah, what motivates uh, you? Well, I, I live the way I want to be remembered. And um, I, uh, I want to re be remembered for loving and accepting everyone for exactly who they are and maybe making them laugh a little bit. And if I can do that, it's a good life. Um, as far as you know, COVID, um, as terrible as it is, and we don't have to talk, we could talk for hours, you and I, about the mm -hmm. stories we both heard. Um, I chose to look at it as, and, I, and with my couples, is this is a great opportunity to That's come it. together, to come together and build connection and intimacy. You mm -hmm. have the time. You exactly. certainly have the time. And this can be a good memory that we have. Um, in all this tough times, it, it's, it's just a great opportunity to spend time together and, and talk and connect. It's great. It can bring you together or tear you apart. It's really okay. your decision. Okay. And my, as you know, the show is about intimacy. And so I'd like to hear from my guests um, what they define um, intimacy as. Intimacy is the ability to connect with each other's authentic self. Ooh. To be okay. you, to truly be who you are. Take the armor down. And um, you know, obviously, you know, Brene Brown, vulnerability. Right. Um, and this takes place in all areas. It can take place, intimacy can take place in the kitchen. <laughs> making, right, exactly. making dinner or it can take place in the bedroom um, right. and it's 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 how you connect and it's great how you put it because it's not just you it's not just connected but you put in the authentic self yeah so, yes that's a scary thing to yes. be authentic <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah. we we, we uh we try to encourage people to um, to be that person. Uh, it feels so much better. Mm -hmm. it feels and so I think much better. Now, now you said that with COVID nineteen, a lot of the stay at home, we're home more. Mm -hmm. So because we're home more, um, I think there is a tendency now for now to people to be more authentic. I hope. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> Because we don't have so much of the outside distraction. I ask my couples who have a problem with authenticity, I'll say, let's just say the man has the problem. Right. I'll ask him, well, does your wife love you? And he says, yes. And I say, well, how do you know if you're not being authentic? How do you know that she loves you? If maybe she loves the part that the image you show. How do you know she loves you? And it's very thought provoking. Um, but like you said, it's about being vulnerable. And um, as you were telling your story, I'm curious in the sense of with your, your own wife and with your struggles. Um, and it's, you guys met during your struggles? Yeah, yeah. I yep. told her, I said, I had our first date, I had an incredible pain that took me to the ground oh my gosh and i thought well and you know i tried dating um 
And I'll never forget one day I went on, it was lunch, and I was very open about my illness. And the lunch was going really well. And then in the middle of the lunch, the woman says, but John, you're dying. And I said, so are you, what's your point? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so um, when I, I, I literally fell to the ground, Sherry was amazing. And she's like, don't worry about it. And I'll get the car and we'll, we'll, be, we'll be okay. Um, you know, and, and that word we is pretty important too in connection. It's pretty hard to fight when you're saying we. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly, yes. Yeah, but it's, it's um, inspiring how you guys were able to connect when things were not, you know, perfect picture. And now, as we're in a time of our lives, for most of us, things aren't perfect picture. So there's hope for all these couples out here listening about how you can help them connect during difficult times. So we're going to take a little bit of break for a second. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, and after our break, we're going to come back. And John is going to actually go into the meat and bones of this conversation. And he's going to talk to us about what is a bid for connection and how that impacts intimacy. All right, we're gonna take a break now. During this difficult time that we are all facing, many people are in need of someone to talk to. One option is speaking to a therapist to express your anxieties if you're feeling isolated or just need someone that will listen and help you with coping skills to get through. Dr. April Brown is now accepting new clients and is working with her existing clients through distance video counseling. The services are through a secure online HIPAA web-based practice management platform called Simple Practice. This technology can provide a secure two-way interactive video counseling session over the internet. For more information about video counseling, please email Dr. April Brown at info at draprilbrown.com or you may call 239-565-6921. Thank you. And remember, we are all in this together. Okay, welcome back to the Bringing Intimacy Show where intimacy is real. So John, we were just talking about um, connecting through times of difficulties. Yes. And yes, yes, and how, um, actually I don't know if I said in the last section, but how resilient um, you've become and have even, have your relationship resilient and stuff. Yes, and so you have this thing called a bid for connection. What is that? Bids for connection are subtle and they're blatant and we make them every day. And we don't make one, we probably make 10 a day. Okay. And they are as simple as, um, there's a good show on TV tonight. Well, you're not telling your partner that just to update them, you're telling your partner that because you want them to join you. And yes. it's called turning toward the bit. Or, right. I'm taking the dog for a walk, which is a bit I have to do a better job turning toward. Um, and they're not, again, they're not, they want you to go. They, they want you to, again, turn toward them. And, um, and then it's, you know what? We, we haven't been intimate in a long time. It's, are you gonna turn toward, turn away? Um, and I can tell you, I'll give you the basic, uh, what I'll call textbook model. Then I'll give you a live example. April, as long as you promise not to throw a shoe at me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the, these bids are, so we live on the water, and Sherry can say to me, there's a, there's a really cool boat going by. And I turn, and I look at the boat, and I go, yeah, that's, that's really nice. It's called turning toward the bid. And then there's, look at that boat going by. And um. Oh, that's a great article on Facebook. This is great. Yeah. Right. Turning away. And then there's, look at that boat going by. And I get angry with her because she's interrupting me reading an email. It's 
called turning against. And the research shows is couples who turn toward their bids 86% of the time, which no one has a calculator, but right. most of the time are very happy. Couples who turn toward each other's bids 33% of the time, divorce. And a live example of this is one time Sherry said to me, ever since I was a little girl, I always wanted to go to Niagara Falls. Bid, dream, all right. in one. Yes. And my answer, eh, went there as a kid, nothing special, and walked up the stairs. And I got to the top of the stairs. I went, oh, no, I just turned away. <laughs> yes. And I came down and I said, uh, you know, we, you know, we're going. So um, one of the first things we have to do is recognize each other's bits uh -huh. um, and take the time to do that. Uh, so right. it's, it's uh it's really good when uh, I, I had a couple lately, a um, woman said to me, John, turning toward is hard. And I was like, yeah, yeah, it is. And when, what did they do, these bits for connection, is they fill each other's emotional bank account. Okay, and I, I, I kind of think of it as, say there's $100 and April, you and I are together and you're turning toward all my bids. So I have all the money. Okay. Well, I should be turning toward yours. Right. And so I'm going to give you, give that money. We're going to share it and everything's good. If you turn toward all my bids and I don't give you any turn towards back, your, your bank account, your emotional bank account is empty. Exactly. You're not going to turn toward anymore. Right. <laughs> There's nothing in the account to turn. So um, it's real important that we turn towards each other's bids. Yeah. So, John, um, and I know you probably have been asked this question or seen it in session where someone makes a bid because um, you just mentioned um, sex and then the other person gets um, defensive. Yeah. 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 How do you um, work with people who get defensive when they hear a bit? Because well, they, they hear criticism, even though that's not what the bit said. Um, the, yeah, they hear probably criticism, you know. You never turn toward my bit of, of intimacy, right. of sex, and never and always are... are in right. my world, I call them four-letter words. Um, and then naturally, they're going to be defensive. So um, I'm sure you know Esther Perel. And right, she's one of my favorites. Yeah. Esther is amazing. And Esther says, we shouldn't be talking about why we're not having sex. We should be talking about why we should be. Uh -huh. And it should be, and it's so clear is that women respond uh, to sex with connection. If they right. feel connected, they're more able to turn toward the man's bit. Right. And the man thinks, well, if we had sex, I'd turn to, I'd make you feel more connected. And it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Two different worlds. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yes. And um, one of the other things that you mentioned that's really um, important in the success of a relationship is you're saying bids, but also dreams. Yeah. Um, and we're not talking about the nighttime dreams. No, <laughs> no. It's, you know, I, uh, the dream, if you listen to life, listen television you'll always hear people say that was always my dream or and the dream is such a great you know bid for connection and it's such a great connecting thing because um one just talking about the dream the dream always changes mm. it always changes so we right. We spend 35 minutes a week talking about our relationship, five minutes a day. Most couples don't do that. They don't connect that long. Right. 
that that are in our world. Um, so, you know, just saying, hearing both people and supporting the dream. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, you know, Dr. Gottman said it, and I, I truly believe it. It's, it's like one of the best things you can do for your marriage is support and honor your partner's dream. Uh, before we talked, I had a phone call from a couple. The woman said, I've been trying to do this business and it's been my dream for years and he's watching ESPN. Mm, okay. And I, I, I need him. So turning toward um, the dream, yeah, it's, it's, it's important. Mm -hmm. Dreams are, uh, the dream is, is everything, you know. Yes. Yeah. Everything good happens from it. How do you keep the, um, the hope of the dream alive when you're in traumatic or difficult times? You talk about it. You talk about it, exactly, okay. You, know, you, you talk about it, you, you share where you are with it. Mm -hmm. um, you may say, you know, and I, I do a lot of role play. Um, April, so we, you know, April, I, I always want to take that boat trip. And now it's really hard for us because we're locked down and uh, it's, it's just, it was always my dream to take the boat to Florida. I, right. I really want to do that together. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that, you know, it, just talking about it with you is better. Right. We can talk about the trip, what we're going to do on it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and plan it together. That'd be good. Right. And you can also sometimes, I mean, fantasize. Yes. Yes. Oh, which, yes. To let your imagination go, especially if you have all this time now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Fantasy is a good thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that really helps in the sense of relationships and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So oh, yeah. in your you know, what makes a successful relationship and how can then on the other end, what behaviors predicts relationships that may um, not do too well? Um, what makes a successful relationship in my world is uh, connection first and, and really valuing the connection that you have with your partner. Um, there's also something called rituals of connection that we do every day or every night. Could be having a cup of coffee in the morning. Um, Sherry and I share yogurt in bed every night and we just okay. talk. And uh, I, we call it, and I think I'm gonna trademark it, yogurt time. Okay. And <laughs> I will share with you an interesting story is Sherry had to go down to North Carolina uh, a few months ago. And she went on a Tuesday, no yogurt time. No yogurt time Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. She got back Saturday, we didn't have yogurt time. Sunday, we didn't have yogurt time. Monday, we didn't have yogurt time. Mysteriously, we were fighting more. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Because we weren't connected, so yes. um, the the they make it the connection makes it honoring the dream, respect, um, you know, accepting your partner's influence okay. is important. the The word partner partnership is how to win. Again, I said it's really hard to fail when you're saying the word we. Because you're together, and um, what breaks it? Well, uh, there's four things. Um, for starters, uh, yeah. criticism. Criticism is basically saying, you know what? I'm better than you, and that just separates you. Or you never do that, and you're basically saying, you never do it, I do it. Right. And naturally, you're going to get met with uh, defensiveness. 
because I'll say never, and of course they'll say, I do too, I did it last night. Well, how about the last 10 years? <laughs> the only reason you did it last night is we were gonna talk to John today and you knew it. <laughs> um, so um, the contempt, disrespect is, is just, it's terrible. It, it literally has, as you know, um, it affects the immune system. Right, exactly. Um, and that has repercussions later in life. And then the last one, which, and I'm guilty of it, uh, so I'll take the leadership role. 85% um, of men stonewall. Um, we shut down. Right. We think, oh, April, you know what, whatever I say, it's not going to make a difference. Um, Sherry has said, um, when I stonewall, I'm 95% John. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> she, she knows very well. It's like, nice weather. I'm talking to you. I just said nice weather, <laughs> um, but it's not connection. Mm -hmm. So those, those four will take its toll. Um, and again, turning away will break the relationship. They'll question, why are we even doing this? Right. right. Um, and you just, you know, very um, important thing that many of these things in the sense that that can hurt a relationship and even the sense of the disconnect also hurts a relationship. But you're also talking about the four horsemen, but many of those things affect our immune system. Yes. And how right now we really need to have strong immune systems and how um, it's so important to connect with your partner. Yeah, and it's one of the reasons I had said we, we come together. We got to come together or we break apart. And coming together, we have to fight this. There's a lot of levels to fight it. Uh, this is not a level that's talked about that often. That if we come together, we actually build our immune systems. And um, I know with connection, there's no way I'm going down from that virus. It's not going to exactly. happen. Exactly. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> and it is, about, it is about connecting and being strong and being positive mind and resilient, which is one of the things that you're um, talented at. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I, um, you, you know, it's in the connection thing um, in resiliency. Um, when I had uh, my really bad stroke, I was on life support for five days. They didn't know whether I was going to live or die. Had the tube down my throat. And I opened my eyes after five days. And you want to talk about connection? Sherry was holding my hand. Mm. And uh, I often ask if what happened to me happened to you, right. do you think your partner would be there for you? Right. Um, and some of them say yes, some of them say no. Mm -hmm. So we have to get them in that environment. And so where they're, they're able to be there through the virus. Right, exactly. I mean, this is this is a great opportunity and i know that sounds kind of hard but it really is and you and i are so on the same page of positivity right it's it's such a it's a, a great connection thing mm -hmm. we'll get through it we yes will. and holding and connecting with one and with one another yes yes so i know john you have um if no if uh, people have heard him say godman a few times it's one yeah. of the number one trainings um, in the sense of couples and marriages and that kind of stuff. And John is one of the um, experts in that training. So, John, we want to take a little break, but um, okay. in the break, we want to le learn a little bit more about you. And then right after the break, we'll be opening up for questions. Okay. All right. Okay. So, Good. Go ahead and talk about yourself, John. Oh, wow. Um... Well, I, I, uh, in my practice, I often say to people, I don't worry about the people I talk to. I worry about the ones I don't. 
Um, the people who have the courage to go through this process is, um, is really good. It's a great process. Um, I don't use a 50 minute model. I charge per session, not per hour. Uh, if you want to set the record, it's five hours, 40 minutes. I don't care. I want it to end better than it began. So they feel more connected. Um, this is their life um, during the week. Between sessions, they can call me at any time. I had a couple who, funny story, who hadn't had sex in 18 months. And I said, well, have you tried holding hands? <laughs> <laughs> and they took a walk and they held hands. They took a couple walks. And I got a call at 3 o'clock in the morning. John, you're not going to believe it. We just had sex. I was like, good. <laughs> um, but I, I welcome new clients. I never let anyone wait more than a week. Um, I will always make time. I work uh, basically um, tonight. I'm going to finish up probably around 1130. I started, got my first call, text at uh, 6.30 this morning. And to me, it's not work. It's my dream. Right. So uh, my number well, uh, is, do I give my number now or? You can give it now. I'm going to give it at the end, but you can give okay. it Okay. Yeah. It's uh, phone number is 410-419-8149. That's my direct line. So I'll answer it. This is John. You'll know you're. You're talking to me. If I'm in session, you'll get a message that says that. And um, I, you know, I I think it's a great thing that couples do this. It's it's amazing. Um, I think there's a difference between. I always ask this question: Are you married or are you a couple? Okay. And they say we're married, and we want to get them to be a couple. A couple married people can be couples too. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I'm I'm good. good. And I guess you'll say my website and everything. And I yes, appreciate yes. the time here. Okay, good. All right. Well, thank you for sharing with what you do and what you provide. And um, he's one of the few that I know, and I'm assuming you do a lot of what I call intense counseling sessions. They're intensives. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. <laughs> they usually go about, uh, initially, the first session's usually about three hours, and it flies. I don't have a clock. I, you just, there's a natural ending. Um, it goes down to about two hours. Uh, and um, within four sessions, things should be significantly better. Okay, awesome. And I know that probably sounds crazy, but that's my history. Yes. You said miracle man, not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but I mean, at, at four sessions and you're roughly about two to three hours. Yeah, yeah, that's about 12, 15 hours of, yeah. Yeah, most people come, they're on the verge of divorce. No one ever right. comes to us for a tune-up. Right. <laughs> we, I wish we got tune-ups. We don't get tune-ups. <laughs> right, right. And as a therapist, um, watching how they connect really um tells the story yeah um yeah i will say one thing i'm very proud of is um you know why i can be in them hipaa compliant in the coaching world there's um a little more flexibility in that and i can literally text any couple i've ever worked with and say, I'm meeting with someone now, I need you. And I will, they will call in. And it's just, a, it's a voice on the phone. And they'll oh, say, wow. yeah, we're, yeah, we went through this. You're not alone. And it's one thing hearing it from us. It's another thing hearing it from another couple. Or That's another, amazing. yeah, it's, I, I admire their commitment. To, no one's ever said no. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, yeah. 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 Yes. And so uh, we're um, open for people to call in if they want to. The calling wow. number is 1-888-627-6008. I think you're going to get someone. We'll see. Okay. And, and so one of the things we just mentioned, which was 
phenomena is that um, many times when people are struggling, they feel that they're the only ones. And oh, how yeah. you have a unique program and having previous couples that you work with provide that support saying, hey, you're not alone. We've been through this. Don't ask me about the Fab Five. I've gotten five people uh, that were the victims of infidelity. Okay. And they are. T they did a session together yeah. and shared their story. And yeah. they have a group text now where they pick each other up uh, all the time. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Really, yeah, it's uh, the Fab Five. I've done a couple of them. So um, that is that is wonderful um, because many times in that particular, if you're a victim of um, being cheated on, you kind of like don't want to tell anyone and you feel embarrassed and all this other stuff. So it's yeah. great that they support. Yeah, it's um, they're called the Fab Five for a reason. <laughs> yes, yes. they really do share their story, and um, yeah. you know we know what infidelity does. Right, so Rebecca's online too. Oh, hey, Rebecca. Hey, Dr. John. And she calls me Dr. John, and then oh, you yeah, know Rebecca, I'm, I'm not. Caveat, he is not a doctor. <laughs> that's fine, but yes. So Rebecca, what's your question? So I just wanted to, um, I have worked with John in the past, my husband and I, Justin. Justin, say hi. Hello. And, um, Dr. John is just fantastic. He, our, our marriage was, well, we actually went to him before we got married um, because we loved each other. We just didn't really know how to express it. We had, you know, when everything was good, it was great. When things were bad, it was awful. And he just really, really helped our relationship. Now we're married. We're going on three years this year. And um, he just is fantastic. And he's always there. Like whenever I, I'll text him and I'll be like, Justin's doing that thing again, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and he's always available for us and talks to us and, you know, anything that we need. So I just wanted to call in and attest to, um, to Dr. John's work. John, I'm sorry. You're not a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Wait, who is this, Becca? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I can't you said say nice things. About you on, on a podcast. <laughs> Thank you, and you know, we were so honored to be invited to your wedding. That was that was yes, yes. something I'll never forget. Wedding, and it was yeah. a lot of fun. We had a we had a fantastic wedding. Justin did not want to do a wedding. He kept saying, even the morning of the wedding, he's like, "We should just go to the courthouse. This is ridiculous." And then the day after the wedding, he's like, "That was so much fun. I can't believe you planned that." <laughs> So we had an awesome wedding. I'm so glad you guys were able to make it. Yes. yes. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca, for calling in and also for sharing with us because I think for many couples of people out there listening, they want a counselor or a coach who can they can connect with always and who's always available to meet their needs. So thanks for sharing yeah, that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for, for having me call in. And just something to, to say out there is, I mean, our marriage is not perfect. It's a constant struggle. Um, we are constantly turning away from each other and turning towards each other, but it's something that we work on daily. And, you know, with, with John's help, we're in a really, really good place. And we consistently stay in a good place, which is cool. So. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Thank we'll you. Right. So now we have Amanda from Maryland on line one. Amanda? Hi, how are you? I'm well, thanks, John. How are you guys? I'm doing well. I uh, uh oh, I lost it here. Uh, let me open it. Um, there yeah, we, we lost go. It. There we go. So Amanda, God, we've known each other for how long? Twenty four hours? Uh, just about twenty four hours, John. It's been an awesome <laughs> twenty four hours. <laughs> <laughs> um. You want to share your experience and what you, you know, why you came to me? Sure. Um, so my husband and I, we've been married uh, 10 years. Uh, we have three kids and um, 
we started to find that we were having a really difficult time connecting with each other. Um, and as John put it, we were, we, we weren't following each other's love set, and it was causing our communication to completely break down. So we both realized like now is the time for us to really um, get some help with just understanding how we can get back to that original kind of spark that we had in the beginning. Okay, yes, and so you've, um, I've had a session with John. Yeah, we did. Okay. Actually, yesterday was our very first session. And, awesome. Um, John is, John is great. John, uh, he, his approach is like so real and so relatable. Um, me and my husband talked afterwards and we were both saying that it was pretty much like if we invited a friend over to kind of just come and hang out and maybe like drink with us and just talk with us in our family room about like our marriage and how we can make things better. It was awesome. I just, like my husband felt like he could be his real most authentic self because John wasn't trying to like fix us. He was more just trying to um, help us to understand each other with that. Right making sure we're not going down the wrong road. Oh, awesome. So, Amanda, had you been through any other um, counseling before or no? Yeah, we did, actually. Um, my husband is part of the military, and um, we saw some counselors with the military, and then we also had seen some um, since he separated from the military. And um, in each of those sessions, it was almost like, I was counting the time that it would uh, be before we had to end, so it was hard for me to open up. But when talking with John, it was just natural and just authentic. It was easy for me to take the time that I needed to get over my little bits of anxiety in the beginning, and eventually I got comfortable enough to open up as much as I could. Amanda, can you talk about the dream? The dream? Yeah. Um, so, what yours was? Yeah, I, John gave my husband and I homework to do, and um, a part of that was us us kind of taking time to to connect in a way where I would do something that he's asking for uh, me to do consistently for a week, and then he would ask the same of me. Um, so one of the things that my husband asked was that I take two hours every day just for myself, not for the kids, not for the house, not for paying bills or focusing on anything with like um, anybody else, just for me. And in that time, I decided to, um, that was actually this morning. So I took my two hours and I drove to just an empty park in the hot. And I sat by myself and I just started writing out some of the things that um, I dreamed of doing because I was having a hard time um, knowing what that was yesterday when we talked with John. And it was like really just like a, a realization that I someone somewhat lost myself in the role of a mom, in the role of um, just trying to be everything to everybody else instead of recognizing like what I needed to be for myself. So I just wrote down some of the things that I dream about doing and it just, it made me feel so good this morning when I came back home and I interacted with my kids and shared with my husband. I just felt like renewed. It was awesome. Uh, Amanda, you, April is amazing. Um, yeah. Can you, you we'll, we'll give you double treatment here. Can you ask us both a question? We'll both give answers. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anything um, you want, Amanda. Be real. You put me on the spot, John. Of um, course. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I can say I I can wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um what things can I do to um what 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 types of things can I do in my self talk time that'll help me to um 
remember it's okay for me to disconnect from everybody else and focus just on myself. Like what things can I constantly maybe repeat to myself that helps me to not feel that mom guilt that I end up feeling whenever I try to take time to myself. Dr. Brown, that's all you. Oh, first? Okay. Well, I'm a believer that um, you have to really truly love yourself. And it's really important because there's a little child in all of us to never say anything negative to yourself at all. And one, one way to easy do that is always talk to yourself because I, I think you mentioned you have kids. Yes. And so I always talk to myself like I talk to one of my kids. <laughs> you, you're, and so that, that helps me, how can I put it? in the sense of not putting myself down and not putting in the sense of guilt. And then the other thing that it's very helpful to remember, um, and they even do this on the airlines, you have to put on your mask first before you can help someone else. So it is so important, even Jesus and a lot of other leaders, they took care of himself first. So it's okay to rest. It's okay to sit down. Okay it's okay to breathe, you know? And if mama, to be honest with you, if mama isn't right, the whole house just doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know. That is very, very true. <laughs> yes, yes. And um, it's okay for kids to learn how to um, soothe themselves and, and spend time by themselves. Yes, so don't feel like you always have to have to be, you know, on the go. Uh, Amanda, did yeah. you know that April and I are brother and sister? <laughs> no. We're twins. We're twins. Yeah, no, she's so right. I mean, it's, um, if you can't love yourself, how can you love, I mean, anyone, you, you really, and it goes against what a lot of people think is, you know, they'd say, oh, that's selfish. No, it's not. No, it's not no. at all. It's taking no, care of your health. Right, right. And biblically, yeah, it says, love sure. your neighbor as yourself. It's supposed to be like this. But many times, you put people here and ourselves here, but it's supposed to be like this. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. you know, and doing the work to take care of you allows, you know, again, every, everyone grows. Yeah, yeah, I, that's, that's definitely like a big lesson I learned from John yesterday as we were talking, my husband and I as a whole, and that as John was just like helping us to understand each other in the way that we receive love, um, I realized like I was sacrificing like my husband's interest in me as a person for me being like consistently a good mom and a good like process manager and um like a good person to pay bills and things like that so this is like causing him to feel unimportant like i forgot how to be his girlfriend and his wife and um i, I just i guess overall i just learned like my my sense of self is is vital to our success as a couple like in our marriage for the future yes um, amanda can you talk about perpetual conflict and how it comes in your relationship in your marriage yeah so um what's funny is when john asked us this yesterday my husband immediately said oh no we don't we don't have those types of uh, <laughs> conflicts we're fine and then as we were kind of talking a little bit more, I, um, I told him, I was like, actually we do. <laughs> so we fight constantly about the silliest things, like, you know, the laundry and the way that he does it versus the way that I do it. And um, I don't know, just anything, like the way we load the dishwasher. And th those silly little things, like there's a root to that stuff. And if you don't, kind of analyze exactly like where it's coming from it just causes it to be this constant thing that's sort of looming over you that you can either like deal with it and try your best to um I guess 
learn from it or you can just continue to allow it to sort of like jab at you here and there and there's just always going to be this like conflict that you guys have every day over the silliest thing well amanda you know you and i fought over the christmas tree right <laughs> yeah the christmas tree, that was definitely a good example because i I never thought about like how my husband's um, upbringing was something that he was bringing to our current marriage right now. And his point of view is basically from like the way that he learned things and my point of view is gonna be completely different. We didn't grow up in the same house. So yeah, John, great example. <laughs> can you talk about, Amanda, can you talk about yogurt time for you two? Yeah, so, um, John, when we left your conversation yesterday, we had so much of like an aha moment with things like that. And um, John was giving us the example of how he and his wife have yogurt time um, every night. And it's the cutest thing ever. Um, and <laughs> like just taking that time to connect with each other is vital to making sure you know, he, John gave very specific, like, facts, and, you know, so forgive me, John, because I don't know the exact numbers that you use, but you were saying that most couples are only connecting around about, like, you know, five minutes a day, and that's, that's unrealistic to, to think that you can actually, like, build something with just that short amount of time, so my husband and I were saying, like, yeah, we have had that in the past, but somewhere along the line, we lost that. As we were connecting with um, cereal, <laughs> we would just, you know, after the kids went to bed, he and I would both go and get a bowl of cereal, and we would sit, and we would eat our cereal, and talk, and laugh, and we haven't had that for a really long time, and I didn't realize that that was our connection time until John talked about his yoga time with his wife. <laughs> wow. Well, Amanda, thank you so much yeah. for sharing everything that, I mean, I was just, a lot that you gained in one session yesterday, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah it was. And um, I thank you, John, so much. We are so excited for just being able to continue this whole journey with you. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. And I hopefully it inspires many you. other people to use this service. And thank you, Amanda, for thank calling. Thank you, Amanda. Yes. All yes. right. No problem. Right. Thanks, guys. Thank Have you. a good one. You're awesome. See ya. Yeah, so on the show now, we've been having John um, talk about his services, and he had some people on there. So, John, tell us again, how can people find you or connect with you? Uh, people can connect with me uh, through my website, lifebridgecoaching.com. Um, my phone number, 410-419-8149. Uh, uh, LinkedIn, just my name, John Wyman. W E I M is in Michael A N. Um, and uh, if you Google my name and the word thumbtack, you'll have access to my profile in the reviews. Um, and uh, I return calls the same day. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much, John, for being on the show. Please check him out. Like he said, he's on Facebook. Um, and he's also on Instagram. Check him out. And he has a website. And the number, again, um, to reach him directly is 410-419-8149. Thank you, John, for being on the show. Thanks, this April. Bring an Intimacy Back show. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye. We'll see you.